And as I said earlier, the helicopter parents, I think, are a lot of the reason why millennials are the way they are, at least in America. Um, I interviewed many parents, probably 30 or 40 for my book, because I wanted to really get a sense of why are parents so involved in their children's lives right now. Because when I was growing up, um, when I went away to college at 18, my parents took me to college and said goodbye. And we kept in touch, maybe a phone call every two weeks, uh, a visit every two or three months. And that was it. They didn't get involved in what courses I took. They didn't tell me what career to pursue. But the millennial parents that I interviewed for my book, they are constantly in touch with their children once they go away to school. Um, it's partly because technology allows that now with cell phones and texting and all that. But it still is a bond that I find very unusual as a member of the baby boomer generation. And this quote I have is from a parent who said that she finds it hard. It's almost like she can't let go of her child, even though they're both, both of her children were in college when I interviewed her. And she said that the school system had always encouraged her to be very involved in her children's lives when they were young. And she was. She went to parent-teacher meetings. She knew what they were studying in class. She did volunteer work at the schools. And she said, suddenly, when I go to the college, uh, they tell me to go away and not come back until graduation day. And she said, I find that very hard to do. So what a lot of colleges in America are doing is they're trying to work into their um, what we call orientation meetings, where, they br where the parents bring their children to campus and they have a meeting where the president of the university or some other high-level official speaks to the parents. And they're trying to work in a message that basically says, OK, it's time for you to start letting go of your children. Um, and the one, one woman I interviewed at a university in New Jersey said she tries to tell her, the parents to become trusted advisors to their children not people who dictate what their children should do any longer. And, um, and yet, on the other hand, this, the same university, it's called Seton Hall University, they have an activity at orientation, which I found rather unusual, where um, they actually have the children and parents build teddy bears together. Uh, I don't know if you have Build-A-Bear workshops in Sweden, but um, in America, it's a company that is in a lot of shopping malls and you, you create a bear with the stuffing and everything. So they build their bear, and they put a t-shirt on it, and it says, someone at Seton Hall University loves you. And it has the website for the parents, part of the school's website uh, on the t-shirt. And the parents take it home to sort of fill their empty nest. And I thought, this is sort of a mixed message to me. On the one hand, you're telling them to go away and let your kids grow up. On the other hand, you're giving them this bear with the website for parents at the school, which to me is sort of saying, well, you know, keep in touch. You know, your child is still very much part of your life. So anyway, um, what's most troubling to me, I think, in, in researching my book is the fact that these parents stay involved in their children's lives once they get into the workplace. Um, I found almost every company I interviewed, and these were all major companies, had at least one or two stories to tell of parents who tried to come to the job interview with their children. Now, that, I don't know how that is in Sweden, but in America, this is a growing phenomenon that parents feel that they had, and this isn't because of the bad economy. This was before the bad economy. They feel that their children need them to speak for them, um, which I think is very detrimental. Um, but it is something that companies are seeing. They're also seeing parents call them and complain about their children's performance reviews at the company. So, I mean, it's just a totally new phenomenon um, that none of these companies have ever seen, and they're not sure how to deal with it, frankly. Um, some companies are trying to meet parents halfway. Um, they're having what are called parent days at the office. <laughs> both, both Merrill Lynch and Ogilvy Public Relations in New York have had parent days where the parents come in and they spend the whole day at the office. They get, there are some speeches given to them about what the company's about. They get to see where their child works. They get to explore the neighborhood if they're not from New York. Um, and it's to reassure them that their kids are gonna be okay at this company. And I asked the woman at Merrill Lynch 
about this, I said, um, don't you think you're sort of enabling these parents, that you're encouraging them to be helicopter parents? And her answer was, well, maybe, but it gives us a competitive edge over Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs and some of the other banks, so we'll do it to, to that, for that advantage. Now, as I said, um, th this generation has really great expectations, um, and it's, um, it's a very credentials-driven generation. By that, I mean they create these resumes. This is before they even get to college of all their activities, all their academic achievements. And, um, and at least in America, where it's very competitive to get into the top universities, um, I understand why they do this. But on the other hand, I think they almost become obsessed with achievement and expect, uh, expect to move ahead very rapidly. Uh, as they're going through school with all these achievements. And I interviewed a business school dean in Pennsylvania, and he said that a, a pair of parents actually sent him an Excel spreadsheet that outlined their child's achievements from kindergarten all the way through their senior year of high school. So it's very much a generation that's grown up with their parents managing their lives and where they feel like they have to achieve in order to be successful in the, in the workplace later. And that's where the trouble comes is in the workplace. Um, I heard this comment over and over again from managers that this generation has no patience for paying its dues, meaning that they expect to advance very quickly, get pay raises on a regular basis, and that they just don't have the patience to stay in a job very long. Um, when the economy was better, that meant moving from company to company very fast. Um, now they're not able to do that, of course, uh, but they still have this desire to do a lot of different things, to advance and to get um, rewarded quickly. Um, they all, all the millennials I interviewed said they really want to do meaningful work from day one. In other words, anything that's boring or doesn't seem like it's having much impact on the company, they're not interested. Uh, some of the managers said we just simply sometimes have to tell them, well, you may not like it, but it's something you have to do, and it's a skill that you need to acquire. Um, so they have to be rather blunt with this generation at times. One young man I interviewed at an investment bank in New York said what he thought is that companies should have true meritocracies. And by that, he meant you should advance as fast as your experiences and abilities allow. And he was very impatient to become a managing director, even though he had only been out of Duke University about three years. And he said that he didn't know if he could wait the typical 10, 12-year period to become a managing director. And that if he didn't get there faster, he would just move to another bank. So this is the attitude that a lot of managers are having to deal with. Now, one of the most defining characteristics, I think, of this generation and I view this uh, both as a positive and somewhat negative, but more positive, I'd say, than, than negative, is that this generation really wants to find balance in their lives, that all the generations from mine through Generation X have all talked about work-life balance, but in America, at least, I think we're very far from having that, um, that companies still expect you to be in the office a certain number of hours, in fact, often many hours, and um, they're really not that concerned with your personal life. So this comment, work isn't a place you go to, it's what you do, um, was a refrain I heard both from managers talking about millennials and from millennials themselves. And basically what it means is millennials want to work anywhere, anytime, as long as they get the job done. Obviously, technology allows that. And there's a company in America called Best Buy Again, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but it's a major electronics retailing chain. And at their headquarters staff in Minneapolis, Minnesota, they're, they're instituting a program called Results Only Work Environment. And basically, they are letting their employees, again, these are administrative type employees, set their own hours. There are meetings they may have to come into the office for, but in general, they're allowed, if they want to work the morning, then go out and exercise for a couple hours, go shopping. They can, and then come back in the evening and do work at home on their laptop or whatever. And as long as they get the project done, it's fine. 
Um, and they, they, they seem to be succeeding with this. Uh, whether that'll spread, I don't know.